Hey everyone, it's Graphic back with another video, and today we're going to be talking about one of the strongest builds right now in the BTR. It goes live October 18th with the rest of the Brimstone Sands launch. It's the Great Sword and the Spear. They both involve a ton of different utility options and tons of great perks with these specific abilities we take with the build. So we'll walk you through some gameplay, we'll walk you through some of the build itself, and then we'll talk a little bit about where this is going to be very viable. It's going to be great, first off, against teams that are going well, melee, because we're going to get perforate, we're going to get fortify with that, we're going to get some rend, we're going to have counter on the great sword, and so many more abilities that are going to help us really through some of these fights. You can see there the attributes we're going with this build is going to be 300 dex, 210 constitution. That 210 constitution doesn't come until after you use that 40 constitution food, so just keep that in mind. So we had a nice javelin toss right into a relentless rush to get close, and we only get one light auto off to start, but we get a nice little counter to get some little damage in there with a cross cut hitting, I think we hit two thirds of that cross cut at the very least. Um, here we're just going to kind of kite back, we missed the javelin toss. Uh, there's not much kiting to be done as we are going the double melee build, so we want to get right back in the mix of it. We have the relentless rush to get us closer, hit the final hit of the cross cut there. We have a nice counter, which is going to do a ton of damage with how much they were putting into that counter. Uh, javelin toss barely misses. We're going to get hit by the sword and shield, rend by the skewer, but it doesn't really matter as our flamethrower guy is able to finish that out. You can see that this damage from the great sword spear is definitely there there's a ton of utility too and you can see here with the great sword we're going to be taking relentless rush into the cross cut and then also taking the defiant side of things with the counter the counter is absolutely huge for the great sword most of you guys know how strong a counter can be with the repost basically being a counter of some way or some sort but here we're having another option to take a counter into a skewer from the javelin toss is something we're definitely going to want to do as well. We also take the perforate because the perforate with the really perk we're going with the perforate, it's going to give us fortify, which is huge. Fortifying, giving us a tankier build altogether is going to be very, very nice when we're blocking with the great sword and we're playing kind of that defensive style with also some aggression as well. So you can see how much damage, I think it just said a 5.4K from the cross cut. I don't know for sure if that's what happened or he hit that 5.4K on me, but either way, you see the strength of the cross cut's final attack. It does a huge, huge amount of damage. If you hit the entire cross cut, I've done with crits over 8K damage. It's a lot of damage if you're able to hit it on a target that either has no stamina or maybe they're CC'd up by hammer or great axe. It doesn't really matter. If you're able to hit that cross cut, you're going to do damage. Some of the basic perks you're always going to want to take on your gear. Resilient, of course. Resilient's always going to be huge. Shirking fortification as well. And then if you're running the uh, light armor, obviously shirking energy is going to be very, very important for one piece of armor as well. So those are kind of the basic gear kind of sets that you're going to want to look for. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about this build, though, in the amount of utility it provides. So you can see the counter there, getting out of sticky situations, doing damage back in return, just like the Rapier does, and that's why I love the Rapier as well. I like to play super aggressive. You can see there the Heart Rune that I use. I activated a Heart Rune, basically kept them snared. I like to go the CC Heart Rune. Um, you can look through and find out which one you want to do yourself, but I like doing a little bit of CC. It definitely helps stay on bow and musket players, as well as, of course, blunderbuss users that are going to try to kite you as much as possible. That extra CC can be the difference maker. So some of the different perks we're going to look for on this build is the leeching crosscut. You guys heard I did four point or sorry, they did 5.4K damage to me. If they did that much damage, imagine how much that healing would do with 74% healing on that final hit. We also have Relentless Freedom. Activating Relentless Rush removes roots and slows. Also increases Relentless Rush's critical chance, which is huge for damage and mobility utility. We also have the Calamity Counter. If activated, immediately gain 29 stamina. That's a lot of stamina, and it provides even more utility to this build. Next up, we have the Spear Perks. We're going to have the Fortifying Perforate, which is huge not only in PvE, but definitely in PvP as well. If you can hit these Perforate stacks, you're going to get quite a bit. As you gain a stack of Fortify, increasing damage absorption by 17% for 6 seconds per successful hit. We also have the Enfeebling Skewer. Skewer hits apply weaken, reducing target's damage by 44% for 8 seconds. So there goes their damage instantly for quite a while. We also have the Javelin Toss, which is going to be Sundering Javelin. Javelin inflicts Rend, reducing target's damage absorption by 25% 
for 10 seconds. It's the highest really utility build out there, in my opinion, is the spear. And that's why so many people are using this on their bow, and so many people are going to continue using it, because it does a lot of damage at the same time, providing you a ton of different utility. You can see here I'm in a 1v3 fight. That fight obviously doesn't go too well for me as we're down 0 to 1 in this series. I want to talk a little bit about what you can do in this scenario with a really great build of spear and greatsword. So this time around, I'm going to try to play it a little bit safer, find out who's the weak target that we need to target and focus and see if there's something that uh, I can find that's going to help us win this match. So the first thing I'm going to do is get into the that defiant stance. You can see here we're going to actually have that defiant stance activated and we're getting some decent heavy attacks down, but it's not doing too much damage as of yet. We missed that crosscut, unfortunately. However, that counter does do a little bit of damage. We try to use some Relentless Rush for damage there. We're not doing too much to this guy overall. So at this point, I'm trying to get that uh, stance back. We do get that stance back. So at this point, we're going right in with a triple crosscut. You saw the amount of damage we did there. A lot going down right away. We're now in a 2v3 as a player just went out on my team. We get a nice counter, though, and we're getting a lot of damage right back out to the enemy team. We get reposted, which is never good, and they get a backstab on us, but we are able to hit them with a skewer, and at this point, we are able to throw a javelin to basically finish him off, but unfortunately, he is able to heal right back up. We're trying to get another cross cut. He is able to, unfortunately, get right on top of me before my cross cut does hit. We get a nice little counter, a relentless rush, and try to throw a javelin to take this guy out, but uh, he's the last guy, so at this point, it's just a matter of time before we probably win this one. Uh, he is able to take me down pretty low here, but I'm not too worried. We get the perforate, and we take him out eventually. So here with the final round, it's 2-2. Two to two. We're going to put the counter out with the greatsword. We're going to get some decent damage down, about 1,000 damage, which isn't too crazy. But we are going to relentless rush into a crosscut and chunking this guy to about half, turning around, getting a nice skewer. At this point, I did use all of my stamina, so at this point, I'm going to heal up, try to get that stamina back, play it a little bit safe for a second, get my defiant stance back, help out this teammate in the corner. We already do have a kill into this round we get a nice little counter for some extra damage and again we go for the cross cut the cross cut if you can hit does a ton of damage you can also see the relentless rush there to finish that guy off and at this point it's one man left and he's going to be quite an easy target after a little matter of time of him running around with the stamina and his berserk on so the cool thing about all of this is, like I said, I do the most damage out of everybody in this game, and it continues to be that way with the Great Sword and Spear. It's a crazy utility build, but also a crazy damage build as well. So a lot of fun. Let me know in the comments what you guys think about this build and what build you guys are most excited about in the near future. Thank you again. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn notifications on.